have like lobsters in Boston and of course we got to have pictures of Elvis in uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> and then finally we're moving to a personal uh, relationship with our customers which in retail has never been seen before. So we could take all this social mobile analytics and then really through the mobile country and everyone in healthcare wants to reduce costs, improve outcomes and at the same time create a better customer experience. Uh, for us, a good representation of that would be the flu shot, and I hope everyone goes out and gets a flu shot because it keeps all of our health care costs down by doing that. For us, uh, the flu shot is basically a start. So we're moving into other immunizations. We're looking at new ways to perform lab tests in, uh, in a retail setting, and all that really helps provide convenience for 85% of all Americans live within three miles of a Walgreens. So one of the other things we also have to do is be able to perform that service uh, we've rolled out Walgreens Health Cloud, which is basically our cloud application to allow our people to perform clinical services in the stores, but we also do it in the home. And with that information, we could share with doctors, hospital systems, and we're really on the early stage of this, but for us, it's fundamentally important to provide that new healthcare experience for customers. And then finally, we're going global. Uh, we've announced a merger with Alliance Boots, and the combined company will uh, be the largest purchaser of drugs in the world. Uh, we'll have 370 data uh, distribution centers around the world, servicing 180,000 pharmacies and doing that in 20 countries. So, and much of that. To get all this stuff into the right place at the right time for the right buyer, to your point about the lobsters and, and yep. so forth. Yep. How, does, how does that all work? Well, it's, it's, it's a massive issue for us. And, uh, Basically, you have two different supply chains. One of the things for the front of the store, which is for the retail-oriented business, but the supply chain around drugs and medicine is really complex and critically important. Uh, so for us, we have to make sure that while we're doing promotions to people on our front of the store, that the stuff is actually gonna be in stock when the customers show up for it. So we're investing heavily in all of our core systems, and, and to your earlier note, you know, some of our systems are older, and we have to get them replaced and fit for our business. And we got to do that quick, and we have to do it cheaper and better than we've ever been able to do it before. Budget's going up at Walgreens? Actually, no, this, uh, from last year to this year, we're down. And uh, so we have to do more with less, and the business is asking for it. But what's exciting about it is today's technology allow you to do it with a lot of enthusiasm, but even make it for a better value proposition for our customer. And I think that's what's exciting about being in technology. By the way, is the thirst for innovation down along with the, the budget being down, or is the thirst for innovation up and the budget? Well, innovation is up, but that doesn't mean the budget goes up. Yeah. So that's real innovation, It's funny right? how that works. I know, right? Just, I know. Uh, but that's our opportunity is to be thoughtful about where we place our bets and our investments and bring this new capability to service our business. And then doing it on a global scale gives us opportunity uh, that we've never could imagine before. And, and, and we're in the early stages. So this is gonna be years of opportunity ahead of us to improve value and take out costs at the same time. Any other big initiatives at Walgreens over the next year or two that we should know about? I think that's a lot. Uh, but at the same time, I think for us, uh, you know, Larry said it yesterday, security is fundamentally important. Nothing more important than protect our patients and our customers and their information. So I would say while we're retooling our core systems at the same time, we have to be mindful of the basics and, and our systems have to run and be reliable and available both for our customers but also for our employees. Nothing can really place the great experience a customer has with one of our employees, but at the same time, we need to give them the tools and the capability to have that successful transaction with our customers. Tim, I'll give you a crack here. Any, um Last coaching for me in front of this crowd of things that Oracle can do better to, uh, to, help, uh, to help Walgreens. We talked about innovating. We talked about you know, trying to get costs down. Things that Oracle can do better to, uh, to, help, uh, to help Walgreens. We talked about innovating. We talked about you know, trying to get costs down. I think, I think for your organization, you have an awful lot of great capability that you've assembled by organic and also through acquisitions. I think the ability to bring that together and integrate it in a seamless fashion for us really makes our job easier and better because we don't want to be in the business of connecting things. And the more we can go to the cloud and take advantage of things that are already tightly integrated, so a solutions approach uh, for us would absolutely be terrific and at lower costs, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, please, Tim, thank you so right. much. Thank thanks for doing much. this. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, thanks.
All right, on the same topic, I got a chance to uh, sit down a couple of weeks ago with the, CE, uh, the CIO of General Electric, Jamie Miller. Uh, let's listen to what Jamie had to say as we talked really about the same issues around business transformation. Happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. So when you think about GE and you think about IT and how you apply IT to the business, you've got all these secular changes occurring right now. Hey, Jamie, thanks for spending time with us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. So when you think about GE and you think about IT and how you apply IT to the business, you've got all these secular changes occurring right now. How do you think about that affecting GE and how you guys run the business? You know, I think it affects all aspects of our business. We're really focused on um, several transformation plays for... Right now, how do you think about that affecting GE and how you guys run the business? You know, I think it affects all aspects of our business. We're really focused on um, several transformation plays for marry software with hardware to just bring better and different solutions for our customers. The other big place that, that really affects IT and a transformation play we're running is all around simplification. And I think the realization is that we've got to be fast, we've got to move with speed, we've got to give people mobile apps and other ways to connect, not only in, inside GE, but with customers. And if we're going to be able to deliver that, we can't be worrying about you know, maintaining 10,000 different applications, right. right? We have to operate a... Develop some applications where it creates differentiation. Absolutely. Moving to standard when it makes sense and move as much of that to the cloud and let somebody else do the work. Develop some applications where it creates differentiation. Absolutely. Moving to standard when it makes sense and move as much of that to the cloud and let somebody else do the work. And we are big, but if you implement SaaS solutions, it really allows us to standardize process at scale in a very fast way. So we get out of the local arcade and we are big, but if you implement SaaS solutions, it really allows us to standardize process at scale in a very fast way. So we get out of the local arguments about how to define a process and into a world where there's only so many ways you can configure a SaaS solution. And so for us, we, we really like that because we can scale quickly. Um, you know, on the infrastructure side, we've invested in some big talent. Um, we're being very thoughtful about the internal services we build around it so we can move into it in a, in a smart way that ensures security and privacy but also lets us leverage somebody else's scale. When you think about this over time frames, how a company like GE move into this environment you've described? I think this is a space where um, you know, Oracle, others are going to solve these hard problems in ways we can't even imagine today which is why I think moving uh, into the cloud, whether that's infrastructure, software, whatever that is, is gonna be a pretty appealing approach for us over the next five to 10 years. Thank okay. you, Jamie. Thanks for spending the time with us. We really appreciate it. Great, thanks so, Thank so much for having me. right place at the right time so that business leaders can make better decisions. And uh, please welcome uh, my good friend Ada to the right place at the right time so that business leaders can make better decisions. And uh, please welcome uh, my good friend for, for years, uh, who's the group president of uh, Global Business Services and the CIO uh, at Procter & Gamble, Filippo Pessarini. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Right. Welcome to Open World. Um, let's start uh, with a question about uh, Procter & Gamble. You know, just a massive company. Um, and uh, right now, in terms of your... Welcome to Open World. Um, let's start uh, with a question about uh, Procter & Gamble. You know, just a massive company. Um, and uh, right now, in terms of your overall business, uh, can you talk a little bit about the interrelationship between Procter & Gamble's business
Um, it may be vary from time to time, uh, sometimes being, um, it may be vary from time to time, uh, sometimes being relevant means reducing cost, some other times uh, creating uh, capabilities uh, for the business, but it is a fundamentally critical. way to create value for uh, PNG. So we made uh, a lot of progress, I have to say, in that uh, respect, also with the help of uh, digital technology, which has become much more relevant itself and much more critical over the last few years. At this point, it is very, very strong. We have as a mission for ourselves to uh, transform the way business is done. At this point, it is very, very strong. We have as a mission for ourselves to uh, transform the way business is done because it's not just um, uh, keeping the lights on and operating communications and servers and computers. No limit to how much better we can get, but I feel we are in a in a pretty good shape. No limit to how much better we can get, but I feel we are in a, in a pretty good shape. So binary question, spending at P&G and IT up over the last few years or down? Well, this is what we have done, which I believe um, has been Nature part of IT, what is uh, a, a commodity, where there is no value for uh, our consumers, for our customers, for nature part of IT, what is uh, a, a commodity, where there is no value for uh, our consumers, for our customers, for our shareholders, and we don't win over competitors by running a network better than other companies. In that part, we continue to run as a, as a, as a production line. So we try to be uh, reliable, cost effective, bring down the cost per unit of what we do. And then we are investing a lot in what I would uh, describe as uh, upstream. It is This is where really, really in innovating business models, that is where there is a lot of value for the business and where I believe we can bring a unique, um, distinctive, uh, differentiating value to let's, PNG. Let's talk about one of those. innovative things. So I, I, I hope people, they may not realize that P&G has now moved very much into the digital world. You're listening to those customers. Yeah. <laughs> and I want you to explain this because P&G yeah. will launch a product and now listen to all sorts of feeds of data and make decisions near real time about those products. Can you share a bit about that in the audience? Uh, we, we, I think, Mark, very candidly, I believe we are now <clears throat> in a world which is so fast paced and um, so complex and uncertain. If you look at all the vectors, uh, social, demographic, uh, economic, that um, looking at a business, um, you know, in the past, what happened last week, last quarter, last year, frankly, is interesting, but doesn't add a lot of value. So we've been um, on a strategy, very intentional, for the last uh, two, three, four years of uh, running the business uh, real time. So the idea is to anticipate what is coming and to be able to respond uh, and react on the fly rather than uh, get 
getting the information several weeks later. So with that, we have invested a lot, as you know, in analytics and big data. We have created an environment which is reflected here on the screen, which we call uh, the business, the business sphere, and sphere is meant to be a sphere, so an immersive environment uh, surrounded by mega uh, screens with real-time data where business teams can get together and come to a decision fast. So, so the idea is, again, is to accelerate uh, the time it takes to make a decision, and uh, possibly the decision will be faster, will be better, will be aligned uh, within the business team. And frankly, Mark, uh, this is making a big difference for us. A big difference. This is either really good news or really bad news, um, depending on what job you're in. So I happen to have gone through this with Felipe, right, right, with Bob, right. Bob McDonald and I a couple of years right, ago went through this. Right. And what P&G does is they actually put all the product data real time up on these screens. You're right. And so these people in the room are actually like, they're product managers. So they're seeing real time how their product is selling in the marketplace. Filippo is now loading them up with social data that's actually showing the trajectory and recept reception of their product in the market. People in the room are actually like, spend all the energy all the time on uh, why is that why if there is an issue it is such and so we can uh, immediately zoom in uh, an action plan and then the how is how to improve and literally we can come to a conclusion within a minute you know it can be uh, one hour an hour and a half two hours rather than having all this back and forth for several several weeks right. well last question Philippe, but what from a partner perspective what can oracle partners do to help you accelerate this this strategy and right 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 well as you know mark uh, the partners for us are very very important and oracle of course is um, one of them uh, without uh, our partners very very kindly we wouldn't be where we are we've been able to integrate uh Gillette when we acquire drill out in uh, 15 months and that because our partners collaborated and they were so that has created an enormous value in uh, creating synergies between the two companies uh, we've been able to do strategic uh, sourcing our sourcing but importantly with our partners there is a lot of uh, new capabilities they are bringing and so to your question uh, with this as a background i believe in america you, you and i already talked about this there is um, incredible opportunities in what uh, technology providers like uh, yourselves and companies like us could do in the future. I believe it's less about individual uh, technologies, it's more and more about uh, solutions that start with a business goal, with a business end in mind. And then we engineer together, we co-develop as you know, you and I have done uh, several times. We co-develop, we co-create, and so we go to market uh, with something which works uh, immediately. And the strategies I've seen with the cloud, literally everything in the cloud, I believe Mark is right there because it allows us to uh, get the value of uh, a simpler, 
uh, environment much better. And this will go with a commercial uh, setup, which is uh, simpler, simpler, rather than this long time contract, where, which are now old fashioned. So I am uh, very, very supportive of what you're doing. I'm not saying this because I want to be nice, because that would not be my well, I, I can testify European that. style. <laughs> that would not be my European style, but I, I truly believe this is a good, uh, this is a good move because it can uh, get more value to all involved. You're a great partner, and thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Please, thanks, uh, Filippo. Hey, thank you, for having Thank you. Are you impressed with this movement from side to side? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really pretty. Nice, Nobody man. thought I could handle this, but I thought I could. Um, now, perhaps you've uh, never uh, heard of Dunhumby. Um, if, you, if you haven't, let me try to explain a little bit to you. Have you heard of Kroger? Have you heard of Tesco? Tesco, both very, very massive retailers. And, and really, Dunhumby is the creation of, of a joint venture uh, of those two companies to really get at data to get at information. And um, please welcome the Chief Information Officer of Dunhumby, Yale Cossett. So, Yale, thanks for joining us. I tried to talk a little bit about Dunhumby, but probably better if you do it. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, um, what you're doing with all of this data. You talk, Dunhumby talks a lot about computer science. Um, what does that mean, really, and how does that relate to what everybody around talks about big data? You've got at least a lot of data. Uh, and tell us a little bit how this works in the relationship with IT and the business. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a customer science company for the past uh, 25 years, uh, we've been working very closely with retailer and consumer packaged goods uh, manufacturer to really help them make sense of their data, their customer data, to better understand the customer and in turn uh, provide them a, a more personalized experience in store uh, and, and out of store. And in the past few years, with the um, vast adoption or rapid adoption of uh, digital uh, technology by the consumer, uh, we've gone through a, uh, quite a bit of a transformation, helping uh, our partners really capitalize and harness that new digital breadcrumbs that you know, we all as consumers are, are creating. And really trying to uh, uh, move from a world that's looking just as the, 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 the purchase history or the longitudinal data as we refer to it, and, and absorb that new data to really fine tune that understanding of the consumer. So from a, a technology perspective, that means building platforms that are capable of consuming vast amount of data, much bigger uh, volume of data than we ever uh, anticipated having to in the past, but also uh, data that is different, unstructured, uh, unpredictable in a way, and then apply uh, our customer science, which is really the core of our uh, business, core of our IP, to really uh, interpret that data, understand what is relevant, what matters the most to the consumer, and, and, and inject that in the customer experience, in store, uh, in digital channels, and so forth. All of sell, cross sell, how to sell me more stuff, increase the basket. Yeah, it really, it's really, it boils down to the more personalized, the more relevant the experience and the engagement is with the consumer, uh, the longer lasting the relationship will be, the more loyal uh, the customer will be to your brand and what you stand for, the service you're able to provide to the consumer. So I think it sounds hard, right? So you're ingesting all of this massive amounts of data, some of it extremely granular. You're having to deal with a huge scale of data. Um, how, do you, how does the cloud play into this uh, engineered systems? How does this affect, affect your business? Some of the, it is hard, so yes, uh, absolutely extremely hard. I don't encourage anybody else to uh, try it at home. Um, it's, uh, it's very challenging because you've got a, combi you've got a combination of uh, uh, different type of challenges. 
One is uh, um, the, the volume and the complexity of, of interpreting and translating that data uh, is quite massive. So you need to create a platform that can absorb that volume of data in a reliable fashion. You would not uh, want to provide uh, services to consumers digitally that would go dark for 5, 10, 20 minutes. Uh, in the past, if you know, something was uh, not quite right in a store, in a physical store, it may affect five minutes of a one consumer's experience. Today, you may impact 10, hundreds of thousands of consumers at once. So first, you need to have a, a scalable uh, technology platform that can go with you, grow with you, and the consumer services you provide. Uh, and, and that's where cloud-enabled uh, technology and platforms has played a, a massive role in our uh, ability to deliver the services we are delivering. I mean, ha what kind of platform might you have to deal with all this massive scale of data? You may know a, a thing or two about it. We, um, we standardized on uh, Oracle Exadata about two years ago. We went as a data uh, and a science company, as you can imagine. We went through a pretty extensive uh, assessment of all the key players in the industry. And, uh, and we really narrowed it down to a few and ultimately selected Exadata, uh, primarily because of its scale and, and the vision you guys had behind the technology around integrated, uh, uh, integrating the hardware and the software and also uh, uh, heading toward a, a, a cloud-based uh, 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 set of platforms. So we've standardized on Exadata. We have over a petabyte worth of storage today on that platform globally, uh, which may not sound uh, like a big number, but as you said, it is complex, it is difficult. Because you're looking for really absolutely. granular pieces of data within the petabyte. Yeah, absolutely, the, 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 A, the number of consumers we are uh, um, helping uh, our brands and, and retail partners deal with is, uh, is increasing, um, but the level, uh, the volume of data each of these consumers is bringing to the table is also exploding. Uh, digital uh, or, or social and mobile channel uh, uh, generated data is, is a massive uh, challenge from a volume perspective. Uh, and then the, 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 the second aspect of the challenge is the customer is expecting that level of personalization, not only in, in the store or, or in a physical environment, but also digitally. And when, when you start interacting or engaging the consumers uh, uh, digitally, you need to do so real time. You wouldn't expect to get a, 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 an offer or some communication as you walk into the Moscone Center you know, five days from now. I need to reach you and engage you now. So that means that the, the science that we apply on that data needs to create the output, the insight, real time or quasi real time, and then trigger uh, some engagement with the consumer also real time. And all of this is complex, and to really create that, that connection, that seamless integration, uh, and, and do it at scale with hundreds of millions of consumers, you do need a, a platform, a technology platform that can scale with you. Yeah, it's a very interesting point. So even if you get the analytics right, if I can't deliver something to the consumer at the time that it matters to the consumer, the analytics might not, might not really help. Uh, absolutely. That's been one of our primary focus, which is how do we almost kind of get out of the way of the science? Uh, creating the science, creating the, the, the complex algorithm is one aspect of the challenge. And our data scientists, who are some of the best in the industry, uh, are very good at creating that. But you do need the technology platform, in our case, a, a cloud-based uh, infrastructure and, and set of uh, solution to amplify the work that the scientists are, are delivering to really be able to scale that up to hundreds of millions of consumers. Right. Anything else innovation-wise that we should know in the next year or two out of Dan Humby? Um, we are um, um, investing a lot of energy right now in what we would call new data, uh, uh, quantified self data. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, data is being created today uh, by you, me, everybody else in the room uh, through the digital devices we create, wearable devices we, we wear. And, uh, and it's creating a new set of opportunities uh, for our retail partners and, and consumer packaged goods partners to really uh, uh, deliver new services, new uh, uh, engagement opportunities to the consumers around health and wellness, but also helping them live a, a better life around, you know, whether it's you know, to comply with budget constraints, and, and God knows it's a, it's a challenge today in our economy. 
but also people are becoming more and more health conscious and willing to really make efforts to, to impact their, their life. As uh, Tim mentioned earlier, when he was talking about some of the uh, innovation around uh, Walgreens services. So we're spending a lot of energy in, and I would say uh, expect to see a lot more uh, services from our retail partners globally around health and wellness and, and helping people uh, uh, apply their efforts into that space. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. We deliver education services, everything from printed textbooks all the way through to learning management systems and professional services in schools and universities. We've moved from a sort of a print to a digital environment. Pearson's grown through acquisition over a number of years. We've acquired a number of different companies into our organisation. Each of those organisations brought their own IT and ways of working. So now is the opportunity to look across the whole company, put in a single operating model, reduce the number of IT legacy systems that we have in the environment and to streamline the whole operation. One of the things we're doing is actually a dual approach of focusing on simplification of IT at the same time how we uplift the customer experience. Moving to a single ERP system means moving to a single version of information truth across the company, means we can decommission a lot of legacy IT and move the whole company onto one way of working. In the way we describe our customers, again, we want to get to a single holistic view of, cu of customer data, which means moving to a single CRM environment for the company. Once we have that, then we can track the customer or learner lifecycle through their period of working with Pearson. And so it gives us a very powerful vision of, of the customer from cradle to grave, effectively. By architecting a single cloud platform, we can get all of our applications and services running holistically around the world. And so that drives us not only to a very efficient set of outcomes, but also improves security. We can manage data, privacy, and regulatory requirements across the different countries that we work in. This is all very important in our sector. So I think for Pearson, we're at the start of a journey with Oracle, and I'd like to work much more closely with Oracle on the innovation aspects and requirements for us in the education space. Space. I think it could be a great partnership between the two companies going forward. All right, thanks, Albert. Um, Please welcome my next guest is Steve Little, who's uh, the CIO of, uh, in charge of all global IT strategy at, uh, at Xerox. Please welcome Steve. Okay, I think everybody's heard of Xerox. I don't think there's an issue uh, with that. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on at Xerox uh, and what the, how the business is doing and give us okay. a look at IT? Um, this nice, small, intimate setting. This is nice. Um, <laughs> It's a big uh, crowd. Big <laughs> uh, Xerox is uh, going through a, a fairly significant transformation. Um, you know, there's the legacy Xerox, the printer, copier, basically invented that marketplace. Obviously, we know about the innovation that, that they've done over the years and the uh, Palo Alto Research Center, which is still up and running and doing, still doing great things. Um, four years ago, we bought Affiliated Computer Solutions, ACS, which is in the business process outsourcing business. Um, and basically going through a transformation to a services business, which is sort of interesting. You even look at our legacy printer copier market, uh, probably half that business now is really based on services. So it's a cool time to be at Xerox. It's going through, a, um, there's some challenges. I mean, the legacy business, the market's not the most dynamic market um, there is, but uh, the services is growing and uh, uh, very optimistic about the future. Yeah, great. Well, listen, I know you've been very focused on, you've got a large workforce, roughly the same as, as ours. Right. Um, and so that's always a, a challenge. Um, and so this global workforce initiative at Xerox has been a big deal, and you're transitioning to a system. Can you give us some view as to how that process worked, how you worked with a line of business on this? Sure. So we've got about 145,000 employees worldwide, another 10,000 probably contractors that sort of goes up and down. 
Uh, we have no rule of uh, single visibility that to, to our workforce. We've got, I don't know, probably 150 HR systems, payroll systems around the world. And so we undertook an initiative to uh, put in a global HR system. Um, and we are just sort of at the start of that journey. Um, and it's, uh, um, it's sort of a very interesting dynamic. I mean, it's sort of a no-brainer to do it. Um, it's really sort of getting partnering with our HR community and, and really looking at getting them to understand that's really more than just putting in a tool that we need to partner in terms of the, the processes we use and the value really comes from standardizing the way in which we manage people on a global basis. Yeah, no-brainer to do it, but a bit harder to do. Uh, it's a little harder to do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, I, I, you know, I think we're there. I mean, I think that uh, um, I've been doing this for a long time and, and recognize that you can't really have IT projects. You need to have IT and business projects partner together um, to really drive value in terms of, 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 of really looking at how do we manage common processes worldwide. Common processes worldwide, and you're actually, you're going to the cloud. And we're going to the cloud. So we've picked the HCM product, it's in the cloud. Um, it's sort of an interesting uh, dynamic for us in terms of sort of traditional uh, large corporations where we run everything. Um, and, uh, but it made sense for us. We, we have the talent management to Leo. Um, we are an ERP, Oracle ERP, and really looking at the, uh, this, uh, the implementation is, is, is really easier for us, and we look for the integration. Taleo is actually the cloud offering as well. So we look for the integration of various components to really help us drive, drive the value that we, uh, that we think we can get out of it. Yeah, that's great. And uh, any advice for people, before we get to the advice just for a second, Budgets at Xerox, IT budgets, are they soaring? Oh, I see. So they're, they're a little down. So again, a little, down. A, little, a little another case, though, of where you got to do more, you got to innovate. Absolutely. You got to do it with less money. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, you know, it's sort of an interesting dynamic. I mean, we've actually had conversations about actually spending more money on IT, and I just basically say, I think we've still got some things we need to do to drive some efficiencies, especially in the legacy environment. We have, you know, we're, we're typically, like most large companies, been around for a long time. We've got 25, 30-year-old systems. Uh, we have a lot of systems that basically do the same thing. So really, we need to simplify that environment. Um, and we have a, a very significant uh, effort right now. We're not going to sort of cleaning the slate and starting from scratch. We're basically taking the best platforms we have and, and converging onto those um, to drive out um, really costs for us and also to be able to, uh, to drive consistency for our business in terms of driving a common processes worldwide. Any advice as you um, go through a project, let's stick with HCM, where you've got an HR organization, you're touching 140,000 employees. Any advice on how you go about a project like this? Well, I think that uh, it's partnership. I mean, I think one of the things that we're, we're doing pretty good at is, is really partnering with the business. Um, Tom Madison, our um, HR, uh, chief HR director, uh, VP and I are basically co-sponsoring co the project. Um, and I've been probably just as supportive, maybe in some respects, even more supportive than, than he was at the beginning. Um, but I think he, you know, he certainly understands the importance of, of what we're trying to do. And uh, it's, you know, it's what I call it two in a box and with, and with the business. And I think that you, it's the only way to be successful on large, uh, complex projects like this. And over the next year or two, more projects like this, Steve? Um, yeah, I think that we're, you know, we're, we're really looking, if you look at the legacy Xerox business, um, we've got a, two or three large projects over the next probably three to four years that uh, we're going to be undertaking. Um, on their services side, it's a little bit different because we're in the, you know, we're in the BPO business. We do uh, basically anything. I, I live in Cincinnati, and we just outsourced, outsourced the parking meters in Cincinnati to Xerox. Um, uh, but we run the Easy Pass system on the East Coast. We do uh, financial transactions, benefit transactions. and. We have, wherever there's a contract on a BPO business, we have an IT platform. And the challenges of, of, of really managing those, there's hundreds of them, maybe probably thousands of them, um, and really managing those consistently so that we drive the, uh, the best of, for our customers. Okay. Hey, Steve, thanks for doing this. Sure. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for your okay. partnership. All right, yeah, thanks. Good to see you. Thank you. Please, uh, Steve Little. Thank you. Established enterprises have a huge problem today in modernizing their technology footprint. 
Many of us have deployed technology effectively for decades in growing our business and creating strategic advantage. However, today's modern footprint requires that we bring all of that technology forward and deploy it in new ways. Being able to tap into infrastructure services, platform services, and business services is very different than building traditional applications. At FedEx, we've invested heavily in modularizing our infrastructure so that we can tap into available compute power, modularizing the platforms that we tap into, and even creating modular software services both inside of our own cloud and tapping into the available services out in the public clouds. These hybrid combinations of deploying inside your firewalls and tapping into resources out in the public is a very important step that enterprises have to take. It's really critical that the things that we have, that we manage and that we build ourselves be very good citizens in a cloud world. Being able to tap into and spill over into infrastructure is a critical capacity need that we have in businesses like ours that burst with volumes at certain times of the day or times of the year and then quiesce a little bit in other times of the year. It's just critical that we all learn to be more modern and more capable. And at FedEx, we've invested a lot of time and energy all the way up that stack to our software services and capabilities that power our business. This is it. So uh, Kim Stevens is with me now. She's corporate vice president, CIO of Intel. Uh, she's responsible for information technology across Intel and uh, all of its businesses. Six thousand IT professionals. And please, uh, please welcome Kim. Thank you. So first question, what are your thoughts on the earlier segments? You've got a chance to watch everybody that's come up here so far. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting, actually. You know, you think, wow, we're doing a lot of cool things, and I'm doing some of that and should do some more. Um, but I think you started it at the opening, saying we're in this period of digital disruption. And, and that's actually my belief, that every industry is in some form of disruptive state. Um, driven by technology, so as a technology person, I find that exciting, but maybe also a little bit reflective that um, we've spent about the last decade thinking about IT from a, a IT efficiency point of view, data center consolidation, virtualization, apps rationalization, and all that has really done is prepared us to launch into this next era, which is about business productivity. And um, I don't know a company out there that isn't expecting a lot more productivity from their organization, but is also in some form of, has a new threat people in the, you know, coming in and disrupting the business model. Right. So it's exciting, but you have to be comfortable with change. So in the part of that, I mean, the speed of the business is changing. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I I'll always say, I don't know a business leader that thinks IT moves too fast. They usually say, oh God, IT you know, slows me down, security gets in my way, and, um, and that's something we as a profession have to change. Yeah. And how do you get started doing that at Intel? Yeah, so um, probably start with the business context. So Intel's changing. We're also being disrupted from this PC-centric world into a mobile uh, world and um, you know we're building software and we we have uh, sensors that go in cars and you know bracelets. I don't know if you saw our new bracelet, but we're in the jewelry business and fashion alliances. I don't have one of the bracelets. No. Well, it would look good on you. Thank you, Kim. But you know, so you think about this is our expanding business portfolio. It's a different business model than we're used to and. Um, uh, one of the things that we do really well at Intel is we pride ourselves on our marketing. Intel Inside is one of the you know, strongest marketing campaigns for decades. But when we realized that that didn't play in 
the sensor market and the fashion market and phones and tablets and these new areas, we had to really sort of sit back and think about that media spend. Were we spending it right? Do we have the right tools? Right. To, and um, so uh, Steve said it, you know, he said partner with the business and that is the new recipe. So we partnered very closely with marketing, a joint team, created some social listening, campaign management, data management, um, and uh, these capabilities, marketing automation capabilities that allowed us to amplify our message in the marketplace, know what content people really like and value, and then push that to the targeted audiences. It's resulted in our qualified leads um, went from $300 per qualified lead to $25 per qualified lead wow. in less than two years. How about the speed of getting the leads? from one place to another. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing, the velocity. We have 75% improvement um, in the velocity of tur turning those leads and converting those leads and 17% more engagement. Customers are willing to engage with us and we're a B2B company. So it's, it's, it's interesting to think how fast this has moved from just consumer companies um, to B2B companies. And you're just like us. I used to say, and our marketing department won't love this, we'd spend a lot of money getting leads very slowly to our sales force. Yeah. And that's key. So you've seen the same sort of improvement we have in just get not only the money spent, but get the lead to the salesperson yeah. in the time frame that it's relevant. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you another example. So we have outbound call centers, most, you know, most companies do, right? Um, now our outbound call centers have to call way different kinds of channel partners um, that, you know, not just PC server companies, but companies that would, you know, take a sensor or take, you know, phone design, um, et cetera. And so what happens when you have to expand your customer base, Mar our sales came in and said, hey, I need some more money, got this many more partners, this many more agents, I need to have some more money. And we said, no. Um, and so we partnered with the best sales leaders and we said, hey, what does it take to actually win a customer? So get them to design on Intel. And it turns out that there's a recipe that good salespeople know, and most of that information is digital. It might be when they've come to our websites and we look at our logs, it might be through D&B, so a combination of internal, external data, we created a predictive model. And we said, dear sales leaders, you should organize by most likely to buy, not by account and by territory. Um, and that's a big cultural shift. But when we, were do when we, were, we shifted some resources initially, and we said, organize, call these people first and talk to them about this because this is what they spent time researching. These are the education classes they went to. And those call center agents were five times more productive in, in the first quarter than the resources that were organized in the traditional manner. Um, we immediately then converted everybody. It's kind of, you get that kind of win and people will change. But we created $35 million uh, of new revenue in a couple of months just through that shift. What, what uh, technology did you use to help with this marketing? Ah, so you, you, you might know I a few of those. I do this, you might right? know a few of those products. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and we thank you for some of your acquisitions in this space too. Well, you're so, very welcome. Yeah, yeah, so we use, you know, we use Eloqua, we use Blue Kai, um, and uh, you know, it's been the foundation of our marketing automation platform. Yeah. Well, and listen, you're on, you've got other big transformation projects. Anything you want to say about those? Yeah, so um, I guess I would say here is I think we're at the very, very beginning of this massive shift. Uh, and I've been around the industry a long time. Um, and this is probably the biggest one. It's sort of that cumulative value of what social mobile analytics and cloud can do for us. Um, but this era is about business productivity. And um, we, we will put a lot of our traditional enterprise workloads out into the cloud, consume them via SaaS offerings, and that will transform IT to create capacity for us to take the products and services that our company makes, right, and make them smart. Smart and connected, because they're just like we're in fashion, right? Everything's being come smart and connected, and, and if you're a non-tech company, the best people in the company to do that is the IT team. So you have to sort of make that shift. And um, I do have one ask for you, though. Sure. 
So well, we, our business thinks we move too slow, right? And I, I'm going to speak for every IT practitioner out here in the audience. We have to move faster. We need you guys to continue to innovate, bring us you know, fast innovation, whether it's engineered systems or SaaS solutions, so that we can drive the transformation we need to, and it'll be a partnership. Yeah. Kim, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Kim Stevenson, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me close up. Um, listen, I think what you've heard from here this morning is obviously a lot of companies. Let me give you some context. Um, these companies together have over half a million employees. Hundreds of billions of revenue flow through the companies you heard from today. So this is not a, um, a small subset, frankly, of, of what's out in the corporate world today. And this movement to, you know, you've, you've, you've heard about this all today, end-to-end -end transparency, real-time insight, engage customers and employees on their terms, integrating social data all at the core. And so, next chart. Um, our commitment to you is that we will continue to innovate, to Kim's point. We'll continue to drive on both best of breed solutions and a complete integrated suite. So each of our solutions to be the best at what they do and to operate as, as an integrated suite. You'll also have the unique ability now, as Larry will talk about in much more detail tomorrow, to have platform capabilities to now extend those suites and develop and build applications straight out of the Oracle Cloud. All right, listen, thank you for coming. First of all, thanks to all the customers who participated. Thanks to all of you. Have a great week at, uh, at Open World. We'll see you again, all right? Yeah.